Bird, bird. Right, it's me again. I know I'm not the star player, but I've been dragged off the subs bench again because Chris and Al are elsewhere. I don't know where, but it's probably somewhere better. And I'm here in the south of Spain to test BMW's new 2020 S1000XR. Now, there are pains to point out that it's an adventure sports bike. And... In saying that, they stress the sporty side of it. This isn't an adventure bike that you just go around the world on or do a bit of off-roading on. This is, uh, this is a realistic sports bike. This is a comfy thing that's been designed to just be easier to ride, more comfortable to ride. It's for guys who used to have fire blades and GSXRs, but they've sort of grown out of them a bit. And they, want to, they just want to calm down a tad, but still go a bit bonkers, but do so without making too many sacrifices. Now, it's, it's an update rather than a completely new bike, but it does boast a hell of a lot of new stuff. Central is the new and retuned engine. It's got more mid-range now. Uh, it doesn't have the shift cam motor in it. We'll discuss why later on. BMW are saying it doesn't need it, but as I say, I'll give you more detail on that in due course. Uh, it's got a new frame. It's got a 6% better power to weight ratio, courtesy of a 10 kilo drop in overall weight. That's ready to go weight. There's been quite a bit of uh, kilos taken off the wheels, the swinging arm in places where it really matters. Uh, there's a lot of detailed changes overall. It adds up to what is essentially a very different XR. New suspension, it's got semi-active suspension as standard now. New clocks, new lighting, new styling. Uh, but let's not talk about it anymore. Let's go for a ride on it and see what the score is. <laughs> Uh, we're in Spain and the rain is not lying mainly on the plane, it's lying on the BMW S1000XR fucking launch. Thank you. So Mossy, the rain fell mainly. <sighs> Wherever I rode Wherever that rode. S1000XR. I mean it did have a proper sploosh down. Yeah. Um, do you know what though? I don't mind a bit of that at least because if a bike's not friendly or it's a bit tricky to ride, which is the whole reason behind this bike, it's not going to be like that. It's not going to intimidate you like an S1000RR can. Yeah. This is a bike for guys who've just, who just now find sports bikes a bit OTT. Uh, they still want to go fast, yeah. but they want to do it in comfort. And they don't want any scares. They don't want to be intimidated. They don't want to go, fucking hell, man. That was a bit airy. Uh, you know, they need a bit of kit that, that, that works and they can use to a full extent. And they want to go as far as they fancy. Well, I mean, the XR has always been, it literally, I mean, obviously there's changes to the S1000RR motor, but it's bolting in the S1000RR motor into a frame that's more relaxed, a bit friendlier, and a bit more supple and forgiving, a bit more compliant. You got the upright bars. It, it, yeah, it, it's it's this rather than this, yeah, I think. Exactly. Can you do that again? It's this rather than this. Why really. you down? No, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the big question is, I know you mentioned it in the intro, why isn't there any shift cam? Well, do you know what? I went to the Germans and said, Oi, why is there no shift cam? And yeah. they basically said, because we don't think it needed it. Anyway, there's the bar, go. They, they weren't <laughs> bothered, you know, about sort of discussing it any further. But then I pulled one aside and said, look, come on, what, what's the story? And they basically said that this retune that they've given it has given it the extra sort of mid-range that it needs. And because they don't need the top end, yeah. they don't need this shift cam. So I'd say it's an economic thing as much as anything else, but they've got a point. It doesn't really need it, you know? So that's my next question. Does it really need it? Well, 
do you know what? I, there was a couple of times when I was riding the bike where I went, bloody hell, top end's a bit weak on this. I mean, it was all right. It was still sort of pulling, but it just sort of flattened off. Yeah. Uh, you know, it wasn't like the sports bike that just keeps going on and on and on to the point where you go, whoa, man, I better upshift it. You could rev it out in a few places. But I think that was primarily down to the fact that we're up at quite high altitude. It got... Breathless, it didn't get, but it couldn't give its best because the air it was, a bit was too wheezy. thin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Needed a bit of yeah, ventilin. Indeed, yeah. it was just a, the air was a bit thin, you know. But you got it back down to sea level again and again, you know. It, 165 horsepower. It's not. It's crap, enough. Is it? It's enough for the road. I yeah. mean, how long ago was it when 165 horsepower was as much as you were going to get? It wasn't that far back, was it? So, as an overall package, then, I mean, obviously, we ask, oh, is this new bike is better than the old bike? Of course, it is. Uh, it was very wet, as we've said. Uh, I couldn't ride it to the absolute edge. Well, I could for the wet, of course. Uh, and I don't know if you saw, I did have the odd kick. Yes, yeah, uh, in, 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 in fact, I had a proper sort of moment later, and I was going, must be somewhere wrong with the traction control here, but what I'd forgotten is, when you have it on a certain setting, on the, uh, the highest engine mode, which was Dynamic Pro and two T's with sugar, whatever yeah, that is. Yeah, yeah. It allows a bit of spin, it does. doesn't it? Does the it? bike's more upright. That's it, yeah. There is. Yeah. I just, I came round this corner to go up a slip road, and it just sort of went whoop. And for a moment, I thought I knew how to ride a bike fast. This is like a, this is like a comfy, realistic sports bike. Uh, this is the one that you could go fast on all day long take a few bits with you uh, and generally have a much more civilised life. I mean it's, uh, they say it's 10 kilos lighter and it's certainly a piece of piss to lob about. Uh, look, you, you can dominate this bike because of the riding position. The bars are like massive levers, you just put a bit of, well just the slightest of force into them and you get the thing to steer you straight away. Um, I thought the motor would have a bit more at the bottom than it does. Uh, oh, you fucker. I don't know why that kicked. It shouldn't have, because uh, the traction should have served it. Do you know what? I, I, I liked it because uh, it, it's sort of, for me, in a way, um, I don't want to be scared anymore. I want to. I just want a bit of comfort. I want to buy some bloody luggage or whatever. It, that that's a bike to howl down to the bottom of Spain yeah. on and have a good time yeah. while you're there. Could have ridden it back and had a and good time. Could have done a track day. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah. I mean, if you put some proper sticky rubber yeah. on it, I don't know if you'd find limitations with the suspension and stuff, but it wouldn't be the last in the group. You can hustle it. So the next question is, and I think it's a lot of you guys as well the kind of vibrations from the old bike. Yeah, I mean... This is a, this was a big, big yeah, issue, and yeah. a lot of people were put off. So either they bought the bike and were put off by the vibrations, or they or they read reports and didn't buy the bike in the first place. So I'm guessing, although it was a bit wet, did you get a chance to kind of I, I, I didn't. answer? I, I didn't, and you know what? In many ways, I'm the last bloke to ask this question, because I was on one at the back end of last year, and I didn't feel it on that either. And I was talking to the dealer that I got it from, and he said, look, some people are fine with yeah. it, other people have come back and said, no chance, can't ride that. And I know a guy who rode one and within 10 minutes said, can't, can't be yeah. done with this, you yeah. know. But I think you need to sort of hang at a certain uh, sustained RPM level to maybe notice it. Maybe your nuts I, I, need to be in a certain place on the tank. To, maybe, you know, maybe. Yeah. What, to get the horn? Maybe it's not a bad bike after <laughs> all. <laughs> that's, maybe that's why girls love it. And it's a bit slimmer in the middle, yep. and it's lighter, got a lighter swing arm, uh, wheels are lighter. I mean, that's the key thing. It's 10 kilos it? lighter in ready-to-go trim. Wow, that's a lot. Probably got a tiny fuel tank or something. Can you feel it, though? Uh, uh, look, I don't think that is a bike that feels the actual weight that it is, because yeah. you can just chuck it about. You know, yeah. you, you get a bit of leverage on stuff, it's just, it negates any challenge that the weight of the bike might provide you know if your bars were down here and you were wrapped around it a bit you'd notice it was a bit more weighty and lethargic but 
And as you've got all this stuff to, yeah. you just, you chuck it in. If you want to go there, just chuck it in. But can you feel the fact that it's been on the diet? I mean, 10 kilos, I suppose, I wouldn't be surprised if you did a back-to-back -back yeah. test that you said, bloody not, yeah. But, but I suppose it was wet and yeah, exactly, again, you know. Exactly, and, and I'm did always you... a bit cautious about this, you know, direct comparison without being able to, you know, make a You're direct... You're an experienced man, that's why we pay you the big bucks. For 2020, we got, we're talking a six-axis IMU. Yep. Is it the same as the S thousand R? Obviously, it's, it's got to be different for different yeah, parameters, etc., yeah. etc. Et but I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if uh, Bosch have said have that. Yeah. You know, yeah. Use that while we've while we've made one. You take that. But it's got. I mean, we're talking. You know, the, the old model wasn't short of electronic aids, and uh, this one looks to be the same. Yeah. I mean, do you know what? Hell of a lot of buttons. Yeah. Uh, Did you get I confused? <laughs> I was looking for the ignition key for a while, mind you, <laughs> yeah. and there isn't one because it's keyless. Look, I, I, I'm a fan of electronics. The, there are times during that ride where I would have gone, whoosh, you bugger. <laughs> and do you know what? I wasn't far away from a hospital that I spent... You never are, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I had a big crash out that way yeah. uh, a few years back, and I was in the hospital for 10 years. 10 years? 10 days even. <laughs> Felt like 10 years. Uh, there's less likelihood of that sort of shit, isn't there, with electronics these days. I know people poo-poo them, but it lets you ride the bike faster. It does, And, yeah. and you know, when you do go over the top, it goes, oi, and saves you. Uh, can I just say one thing, mind you? There's two versions of the bike. Yep. There's the standard one and the TE version, and quite naturally they let us ride the TE version. More bells and whistles, and... I'm not sure exactly which accessories they'd bolted on it, but they definitely added a few. Right, okay. But, do you know what? Uh, overall, it's just a real-world sports bike. Yeah. And that's what I like about it. This is a sports bike you can use to go anywhere you fancy, uh, at any time, and still walk at the end of it, and just sort of not get bothered by it in terms of excess you know, power, speed, wheelies, all that caper. It's rubbish then, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose in many ways, you know, for the, for the, the grown-up generation, should we say, you're on that bike and you're not going to get as much fuss from coppers, are you? It, yeah, it does, yeah, no, I think you've yeah. got a point there, yeah. It does, and, and, and it is a relevant point. From a riding point of view, you don't pull up the lights like you do on a full-on sports bike. No. And I, when you pull up at the lights on a Panigale or something, you can feel the eyes on you, can't yeah. you? Oh, yeah. To perform. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it, everybody's got to give it the old, uh, you know, hand signals, aren't they? Unless you give it massive wheelies or, or smoke yourself into the distance. This bike doesn't have that sort of pressure. Yeah, it's the so it, it's much more socially acceptable, this yeah. one, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bike that can still probably do 170 miles an hour, isn't it? If not Easy. a tad more, yeah. you know? Uh, yeah, uh, good, good point. It's, uh, it's a bike to please your mother-in-law, even. Uh, would, have would have liked to have ridden it home rather than get Ryan a... But yeah. then again, I probably would have liked to have ridden Geraint Thomas's Tour de France bike home rather than get Ryan Air. <laughs> Is that a little dig there? Oh, just to say the dino started up again. <laughs> William! The obvious competitor, the main yep. rival for the S1000XR is the Ninja, new. the yep. new 2020. Ninja SX thousand and or thousand SX, sorry to say. And Chad's out there now in Spain, right now riding it for us. Um, where do you see it kind of lining up? I mean, and again, a bit of reluctance, you know. You've got to ride them on the same bit of road yeah. at the same time. I suspect that Kawasaki's got a bit more attitude, yeah. you know. Um, the, the BM's very German. Do you know what? I, I actually thought at one point this is a super sporty GS. Yeah. And I, and I don't think that's as outrageous as no, you might no, no, think, no. you know. It the, combines the best bits of yeah, a GS yeah. and an S1000RR. Yeah. You know, you've got the comfort of a GS, yeah. you've got the power and agility and the, yeah. what, you know, the sportiness of an RR. It's a, it's a good... I, it's a good I mean, yeah, I think it's a sort of, it's a bit of an understated bike, this XR. I mean, did you see the colour that we were... Yeah. Battleship grey, what are you doing? Yeah. But again, I think it's a deliberate sort of policy, you know, to, to sort of suppress the thing to a degree and, and not make it look like a shouty, shouty, not yeah. like me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You say listen too much and you shout too much. You're northern too much. 
Stop it. it, it it's not as in your face, perhaps, yeah. as uh, as some bikes are. Yeah. And certainly that SX is probably... That SX, I think it wants to make sure you know you're still on a very sporty bit of kit. Uh, the, the BM's not pushing that point yeah. quite so much, you know? So in summary then, it is... It's still damn sporty. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, BMW have done nothing to mute that yeah. performance. Yeah. Um, it's just in a much more sort of refined and sophisticated package. Yeah. Um, and it is probably one of the best. I mean, again, I haven't ridden it, but it's one of the most versatile things mm, mm. on the planet. Yeah. I mean, I had the choice. Well, I didn't have a choice, unfortunately. It would have been nice to have the choice to either ride that back home. Yeah rather than get on the old budget airline back to <laughs> bloody Stansted. But uh, Stansted. there's a place. Yeah. Right, so uh, on ordering the bike, you can have a, a 820 seat. Standard is 840. Can you have a taller one? Yeah. 860. Or you can have a lowering kit, which lowers it by... Bloody hell, right. You can have anything you want. Can you get Claudia Schiefer? <laughs> she fucking looks good to me, mate. If you can get Claudia Schiefer, this is the best bike in the world. If you can't, it's a bag of shite. So would you climb over her to get to me? Now, do you know what time it is, Mossy? You're going to say something I don't like, aren't you? It's... Oh, what, time to eat? It's question time. Oh, question time. With right, Christmas. Right. Go on then. So Vic Maximus says, heated grips, are they mm. any warmer? This was never an issue for me, but a lot of people have been wanting hotter grips. Have they? Yeah. Now, that's a bit of a surprise to me, actually, because I've always rated BM grips on the basis that if you put it on setting two, yeah. you have to turn them down. <laughs> yeah, for uh, me as well. I know, yeah. You know, you could toast your buddies on them. Uh, this has three settings, and um, uh, on three, I, I think they had to go between... From three to two, a okay. fair, fair bit, so, no, good, good. Alan B1 says, what's the pannier system like? Does it still gurgle and pop like the old one? The pannier system? Yeah. Gurgle and pop? Yeah, I'm not sure what that Are means. your panniers alive? Is that Alan, did he say? Alan, yeah. Alan, are your panniers Alan. alive? Alan. Alan. Have you got a small tie girl in your panniers? Uh, I've never had panniers. I mean, I haven't lived here, obviously, have I? I've never had gurgle and pop in panniers. I've missed out. No. Um, in answer to your question about the panniers, they showed them on the bike that they had at the press conference, and then they said, get out there and ride that one without the panniers, so I can't tell you. Right, thanks. Fast Ducati, bit of a conflict here, says, is it big enough upgrade from the previous gen, or should I save a few grand and find mm. a used Gen 1. Uh, do you know what? Good point. Very good point. Um, quite often, mind you, residuals on BMs are good. Yeah. So the, the price difference won't necessarily be as massive as it could be with some other brands. Depends how deep your pockets are. I was saying, for cash buyers, we're talking cash here. Oh, cash? Yeah. Um, look, it's going to be a bit better, but you know what we're talking about, a lighter bike with more mid-range and some more sort of fancy electronics the the price difference is probably a good tour or would represent a good tour around europe wouldn't it yeah true so yeah uh i don't know what your budget is but it's it's not a massive difference i suspect so mr dan howell on facebook asked would like to hear thoughts on height for us shorter riders and obviously uh, you, you I, fit the description yeah and, i'm uh, unfinished question yet chris um, I'm keen to answer. I was ready to drop money on one, but it splayed my legs too much. Um, uh, to, too much to be comfortable, even on the low model. So. Hang on. What? Right. There are options. the old bike. Oh, the old bike. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm pr well, I know on this new bike you can get a lower seat and yeah. you can get a lowering kit. Uh, but, you know, you're going to have to sort of try it yourself because, as you've said, the width of the seat and stuff and how much the suspension compresses. But it is thinner than the previous bit. Uh, yeah, it's slimmer. Yeah. Whether that equates to it feeling lower... No, but he said that his legs were splayed too much, mm. so it might be... Uh, basically, a, oh, yeah. Is very it? personal thing. Yeah. Uh, I think they're trying by offering these lower seat heights and the lowering kit, but ultimately... Who's the bloke out of Star Wars? If you Don't know. 
if you're very, very, very short. Listen, I'm only five, six and a half. It's the half that matters. And I was <laughs> all right with it. Major question for you, Mossy. Yep. From Mark Arnold. Should I brace Facebook. myself? Oh, well, it sounds like it. Can you tell me if the clutch is as light as the one which was at any sea show, as the previous model was stiff as hell? Again, didn't have any bother with it. I mean, you know, because it's got a quick shifter, I was probably doing a bit of clutchless stuff. Yeah. And we didn't spend an absolute age in town, but it, it wasn't something that was brought to my attention. But it, it feels light. Oh, no, no yeah. bother, yeah. Yeah. It, well, I, I would say that it just feels like a, light a clutch. working clutch yeah. lever, you know? David Raffolf, I think that's how you pronounce the name. Uh, did BMW make any changes to the gearing? Uh, yes. Um, internally, some of the ratios are different. They're saying it helps with the acceleration combined with this new mi extra mid-range power uh, to just give you a bit more thrust. So I, I, I'm pretty sure it's something like uh, two, three and fourth gears. Ge gears that you're more likely to want yeah. to whiz by stuff in. But, but yes, there's been some changes, but I'd have to look at the technical spec to clarify it uh, in any great detail. Right, Marcy, I think that's all. You done? Yeah. yeah. Happy? Uh, yeah, I mean, all I'll say in closing is uh, if there's anything this bike might lack, despite the fact it's a strong performer, there's a bit of wow factor missing. Look, when you're on it and it's pulling hard, uh, you don't think that so much, but it's just one of those bikes that I think you'll need to spend a bit of time with and go places on, and I'm sure a lot of people will do that, to bond with it. Yeah. I think it's not one of these open the garage door and go, wow, look at that, especially in that colour. It's just not quite, you know, like I say, it's refined. I think it's had, it's had the tattoos removed, you know, and it sort of always wears a shirt and tie. It's not a bruiser. So what you're saying? Which is a good and bad thing. So what you're saying is, obviously, let's wait for Chad's review of the SX, uh, the Ninja yep. SX, because that could be the more attitude-y, more fun. Yeah, oh, that, that'll definitely yeah. Uh, have, Yeah. you know, it, it's not short of character, this BM, but it doesn't, like I say, just, it doesn't, it, this, this all too crucial, whoa, look at that, or bloody hell, man, you know, I'm on something special here, does, isn't that apparent? Well, like you said, there's no free Claudia Schiffer with it. Yeah, that was a bugger. Anyone under 30, Google her. And be prepared to get the horn. <laughs>